Check one, two. Check one, two.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my bonus Friday night stream. With your host, it's Muganik. Boom! I'm live. How do you like them apples? Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to raise a little glass to you all. It's a delicious uh, Manhattan to start. Hope you all are having a wonderful Friday evening. If you are not logged into Twitch when you're watching, please log in. That would be super swell. And uh, if you want to hit the follow button or throw me a subscription, that'd be great. But like, I don't really need it because like I'm an adult and I'm working full time. So you know, I'm just doing this for fun, really. Um, I was running a community challenge, uh, which you can see is the uh, under the channel points. Uh, menu, which is underneath the chat uh, window, um, but I didn't quite make it. Didn't quite make it to my fire SM uh, ASMR stream, uh, where I was going to light a fire and uh, point a camera at it. Uh, so I decided to do a cocktail stream instead because uh, it's a long weekend, and uh, I feel like everyone needs to get involved with uh, the drinking uh, and general celebration of. Having time off, living like a real human being. Mm. So uh, we've got our cocktail list down in our bottom left-hand corner. We got uh, we're going to go run through a uh, hot cross bun martini. Uh, we've got a Chatham Hotel special, a chocolate sazerac, an old fashioned. If uh, Rhino Cuddy wants to turn up, uh, we've got a uh, chocolate martini and we've got a white Russian. So, uh, plenty to get through. Uh, we're going with like an Easter theme. I wanted to start off by uh, talking to you about talk, talking to you about um, creme de cacao, uh, which is an interesting name. It's uh, it's not um, got any cream in it. Um, the the creme comes from the French word creme, obviously. Uh, that means a creme liqueur, a liqueur with a very high sugar content. Um, now creme de, creme de cacao, there are many creme, creme liqueurs, but creme de cacao comes in two varieties. It comes in uh, white, uh, which is clear, obviously, uh, and dark, which is a rich dark brown colour. And um, they're slightly different uh, in that the white creme de cacao is slightly sweeter and the uh, the darker one is, is slightly more bitter but generally speaking uh, speaking as a person that is basically an amateur uh, at making cocktails they're basically the same thing so if you've got one bottle that's fine you can make any of the cocktails that call for creme de cacao in them even if it's like light or dark I mean it might change the appearance slightly but basically it's the same thing Yeah. Good. Well, I think we'd probably best crack on because uh, we're uh, four minutes in. There's plenty of time for people's uh, feathers to get settled. And uh, we're going to look at a uh, hot cross bun martini. So uh, let's get into it now. So I've got my, my nice, lovely clean tins here. And uh, this this particular recipe, I mean, I've, I've put it down in the, the bottom left hand corner. It's got a uh, vodka. It's got brandy, it's got espresso, and it's got cinnamon syrup. It's quite easy to make. I'm going to uh, make some coffee. I'll be pressing the, the magical button on my coffee machine, which is just off camera. Um, and so there may be a little bit of noise. But um, we're going to crack on. And um, we've got our, our shaker here. We've got our two piece shaker. We've got um, the, the glass component and the, uh, the metal tin. Uh, it's, uh, classically known as a, a Boston shaker and um, it was so named after the Boston bar somewhere in America. I can't really remember to be honest. I'm too drunk I don't know. Uh, so we're going to start with vodka. So uh, it's a, you can see the ratios underneath. I'm going to start with a, uh, a double. I've got my measure here. And we're just going to pour a double into the glass. Just so. And we're going to get a brandy. And we're going to do half a shot of brandy. 
I'm using uh, St. Remy XO for this. Just uh, put that down there. Uh, not that I'm advertising, of course, but um, you know. If there are any sponsors watching, I'm interested. So I'm just going to throw that. You, you make all your spirits go in the clear glass and all your ice go in your metal tin. Because you don't want to dilute too soon. Uh, so I've made my espresso. My espresso is here. It's, um, it's only a single, so that's going in there. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to fill up the coffee machine. Because who knows, maybe later on tonight I might need uh, more coffee. We'll see. Uh, so I've put my espresso in and I need my uh, cinnamon syrup. This is, so I mean, for first time viewers I wouldn't normally make something with uh, such uh, esoteric ingredients but um, I happen to have a little bottle of uh, cinnamon syrup and um, I'm just going to put half a shot of cinnamon syrup in this bad boy Well, well, well. Only time will tell. Raiding with a party of four. How are you, sir? Very nice to see you. Very nice to have you in chat. Time for some drinks, I think. And we've got a new sub. Thanks, Only Time Will Tell, for resubscribing. That's uh, four months of love. Thank you very much. That's, uh, that's uh, really uh, quite pertinent, uh, insofar as... Uh, I uh, got my first check from uh, Twitch today. It's a tiny, tiny amount, but uh, hey ho, it's, uh, all, everything is welcome. And also, thanks for the follow, uh, Avarian CA. Uh, you're a legend. I hope you like drinking because we're going to be doing a bunch of it. Uh, I'm going to get me a, myself some ice. Oh, and we've got a granted suicide in chat. How are you doing? Hope it's all going well. We've just kicked off. We're making the first cocktail. It's a hot cross bun martini. The hot cross bun martini is a riff on an espresso martini. And it's Easter themed. Get our nice chilled martini glass, put that front and centre, ignore the cat that is trying to get my attention. And we're going we're gonna to use the Hawthorn strainer and just uh, close the gate on that so we avoid the ice chips. Because uh, I'm only using a little ice. So it's not quite as frothy as an espresso martini. It does have coffee in it, so uh, like any espresso martini, it'll have that caffeine kick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really getting like a, a hot cross bun vibe from that. But just to make it a little bit better, I'm going to get the garnish. I've got a little bit of nutmeg here and a little grater. And we're just going to grate a little bit of nutmeg over the top. Now fortunately this time, ladies and gentlemen, shut up you! Uh, being heckled by my cat, oh my goodness. Hey Vit, welcome to the stream. Uh, this time, uh, fortunately I've got some uh, willing victims, I mean uh, guests that are um, going to uh, drink many of the drinks that I make this evening. Um, I promise not to go too fast, but um, please don't try and keep up, drink responsibly as you uh, uh, may die. Um, alcohol poisoning, etc. I'm going to take this outside, uh, so I'll be right there.
So there we have it, the, uh, the uh, hot, crust, hot crust bun uh, martini. Um, definitely with the cinnamon syrup uh, and the nutmeg, uh, coupled with the uh, vodka brandy and espresso, uh, very much uh, similar to a uh, espresso martini. I just one, just one moment. What is your problem? Come on. The heckler has been removed from the room. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a very tiny grater. But, um, you know, how else are you meant to grate some nutmeg, eh? Hey? That's so, so small, so tiny. Anyway, uh, espresso mar it's a riff on espresso martini. Espresso martini was famously made. Uh, by a man called, uh, let me check my notes, don't know off the top of my head, uh, a guy called Drick, uh, a Dick Bradsell in uh, 1983, so it's a relatively modern cocktail. Uh, the legend goes that a, uh, a model walked up to the bar and uh, he said, uh, I want to, uh, I want a drink to wake me up and fuck me up. And uh, this was the drink that Dick produced. Thank you very much for the sub, Dom, and the uh, thank you to uh, Granted Suicide for the perfect. But uh, yeah, so you know, that that was where the espresso martini came from. Martinis traditionally made with uh, gin, not vodka, but um, a lot of the more modern uh, martinis use uh, vodka. Hey, Dom, ho hope you're having a wonderful holiday. I know you're on holiday right now. But um, I'm going to be moving on very shortly to my next cocktail because um, uh, I'm a monster and I don't have to drink the thing that I just made. So uh, the cocktail list is going to be coming back up very shortly. There we go. We'll be moving on to a uh, Chatham Hotel Special, which is uh, something that not a lot of uh, people have tried before. Uh, it was a cocktail that was. Hey, Ha! Huh. Who's hailing Hydra? Don't we love hailing Hydra? Only time will tell. Yes. Yes indeed. Hail Hydra. Yes, the uh, Chatham special. Um, it was a, a cocktail which was uh, made from the, uh, the Chatham Hotel in um, New York. And um, it was sort of popular around the 1950s uh, and then fell out of favour uh, but then was re revived again in the early 2000s early to mid so um, we'll, we'll be doing that one next hope you all are uh, ready to settle in to a good evening of drinking they're going to be coming thick and fast. I've got a, a troop of people uh, in my garden that are just crying out for more drinks. So um, we'll work on that. I've got to wash my tin, so I'll be right back. going on here. The Chatham Hotel Special. The Chatham Hotel Special has brandy, port, creme de cacao and uh, cream in it. Uh, you have been to Chatham in Kent. I've also been to Chatham in Kent. And this is uh, not uh, by a cocktail that originated in Kent, uh, but instead in New York. Uh, there is a Chatham Hotel in New York that um, has a bar, and um, that's where this cocktail came from. 
Um, so as I was saying before about um, creme de cacao, um, the thing that most people don't realise is that um, it's essentially the same, whether it's light or dark. I mean, there's there's subtleties in the taste. So, like a, a white creme de cacao is sweeter, and uh, a dark creme de cacao is uh, more bitter. Um, but uh, ultimately, they are both uh, high sugar content liqueurs uh, with uh, chocolate notes. Um, so, even if a cocktail calls for uh, dark or light, or white or brown, um, you can use any kind of cacao in your cocktail. This is mostly a brandy based cocktail. So, we're going to uh, fire off the St. Remy. I'm going to rinse my uh, jigger. So we'll just get a, a, a double of brandy, we'll just pop that down there, and then we'll get some port. That's port and brandy, very famous for uh, being a combination that works well together. Hope that's still in date. <laughs> um, yeah, so one and a half shots here. No. That's not right. One and a quarter, or thereabouts. It's not an exact science. I mean, it's all to taste, isn't it? So you've got brandy, you've got port, you've got creme de cacao, creme de cacao brown. Lurking while doing food. Fair enough. Only time will tell you. Okay. Uh, creme de cacao. Well, one of these. And then we need uh, cream. And we'll just get about a half of one of them sitting in the bottom like that. I'm going to get me some ice. Thanks for the stream. Sorry I fell asleep. Now this drink would normally be served in a uh, coop, but um, as it stands, I don't have any of those, so I'm going to serve it out of a giant wine glass, just for fun. You want something with a, a wide opening to serve this drink out of, so that you get the aroma, and we're just going to strain this. into your chilled glass. And once again, we're gonna go with the uh, the grated nutmeg. Just for the garnish, super easy, barely an inconvenience. A tiny grater. Thanks, Dom, for saying that my bar looks cool. It's an unusual cocktail. Yep. I'm going to see how my guests like it. So 
there we have it. I hope you all enjoyed uh, shaker cam with the the metal. That was everything. I'll take a brief pause and uh, let people catch up, if you will. Just gonna check my messages real quick. Everything, everything as I expected. Good. Oh, pop that up. Uh, that was one of my guests on. Uh, we've got, uh, I've got a selection of uh, people over uh, to drink some of the cocktails I'm making. Uh, they're quite thirsty. They, uh, they do quite like the booze, but. Um, yeah, they, uh, they'll walk back to the forge from time to time. You may even see them cross uh, to go to the loo. But, uh, you know, that's their prerogative. I'm just here to make some drinks, keep them uh, lovely and hydrated. No, Dom, it wasn't a ghost. No, definitely not a ghost. Yeah, just people in my house. It's a small but uh, well-selected group of people that uh, like to drink booze. Um, yeah. Do not, do not talk to the drunk ghosts. Don't talk to ghosts at all, because um, ghosts aren't real. Um, it's well known. Um, and it's probably not a ghost, it's probably like a plastic bag or the wind. Yeah. Spirit man. I know it, right? So welcome, welcome one and all to the stream. Uh, welcome uh, to humans and robots alike. Uh, there are plenty of robots in chat right now. Uh, I want to bid you all welcome too. Uh, very much uh, probot rather than robophobe. Um, so everyone is welcome in this stream. So, yeah, that that was the uh, Chatham Hotel special. It was resurrected, if you will. Boom. Megan M one forty seven. Thanks very much for your first time chat contribution. You're very welcome in stream. We're just here drinking and having a good time. We've got the smooth sounds of jazz. And very shortly we will be moving on to our next cocktail. Which is the Chocolate Sazerac. This is probably the cocktail that has the most faff out of all of the cocktails this evening. But uh, it's an interesting one. So yeah, after uh, after tonight, obviously I, I stream regularly on a, uh, a Monday or Wednesday night. Uh, Monday is is always uh, Hearthstone Battlegrounds. It's a uh, fantasy card game. Uh, I struggle to uh, win over against another seven people per game. Uh, sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. And then um, Wednesday. Wednesday is my variety stream where I'll play a variety of different games. Um, most recently I think it was uh, Stream the Spire. And then every other week I'll uh, I'll be in uh, a D&D game with um, Only Time Will Tell underscore UK. Um, I can do a shout out to him, I will. Just 
just uh, get the chat window going. Oh my goodness, Dom. Oh, Dom, Dom with the 10 gifted subs. My most generous of mods has uh, thrown down the gauntlet and uh, has uh, Stone, yeah! thrown out a whole bunch of subs <sighs> to a whole bunch of people. Dom's, Dom's busy waxing off all of his uh, sound alerts there. Uh, but uh, at Dot David, Granted Suicide, Toki Bunny, uh, Cruel Veil, uh, uh, London Euphoria, Red Death, Dom, uh, also uh, gifted a sub to uh, Inari, uh, Marco Polo86, uh, Clements Babe, and uh, Megan M147. Very, very generous of you. Thank you very much, Dom, you absolute legend. And uh, thanks for all the sound alerts too. Rock and stone to you too, brother. Rock and stone. Okay, the hotel, the Chatham Hotel Special, only a four out of ten. Not people's favourites. All right, well, if that's the case, we need to probably move forward then, don't we? And we'll, we'll move on to the Sazerac. Gosh, there's new subs there, just keep coming. Just keep coming. Okay, so uh, this is probably one which a lot of you are not going to have the ingredients for. We'll get on to some more simple stuff later on. I thought I'd do the simple stuff later when I was more pissed. Um, so this one uh, involves making Nabs in Fritz, so I'll be right back. So, this particular drink, we'll be using the uh, Parisian absinthe. Good to see some scoring. I know, right? Up into my phone. There it is. Oh. So, where's my jigger? Alright, so for this particular one, we need a half of absinthe. Probably slightly over a half, but hey, hey, it's fine. 
And then we need to top this glass up with water. And we set it to one side. Uh, and then we get our tins back. And so this is a stirred cocktail. So we're going to need some bourbon. I'm going to go with the uh, Woodford Reserve. Hello, friend. Train O'Cara. Tra Train O'Cara. Welcome to the channel. And thanks for throwing in a voice alert. All right, we're going to need some bourbon. Let's crack on with some bourbon. Double of bourbon goes in the glass. Just sits there menacingly. Like it's being spiteful. What else do I need to do with it? That's the question. Well, I need some creme de cacao. I'm going to use creme de cacao white this time. But as I mentioned before, you can use any creme de cacao. And we're going to do a half a shot of creme de cacao. In there. <sighs> Barfanaba. Barfanaba indeed, sir. Barfanaba indeed. It's very relaxed. And we're going to need a little bit of sugar syrup. I'm uh, going to need a uh, half of sugar syrup. So a half of a half. Just a little bit. Does not need a lot. This is mostly to counter the, at the, uh, the absinthe rinse uh, that will be on the glass. Uh, and we're going to need some bitters, so I'm going to go with some uh, Angostura bitters. Just a couple of dips of that. That's enough. That's more than enough. And we're going to get some ice. And we're going to kind of making it in this. Hey, thanks for the follow. Uh, who was that? Uh, Pink Kelber. Thanks very much. Uh, I hope you're not a robot, but if, even if you are, you're more than welcome here. Alright. So we filled our glass with ice, and we just give that a stir for probably about a minute. We're just trying to get that temperature down without over diluting the drink. a little bit longer. Dom Dee's Dom with the hello to bots. You can also say hello if you're a human, that's fine. We do love and appreciate you. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's probably enough stirring. If it's not a minute, it's not a minute. So, what do I need to do now? Well, now we take our glass of that absinthe and our uh, ice and our water and we throw it away. The nose on that, you're getting all the, um, the aniseed off that. It's great. And then Drain the rest of that drink, the rest of the Sazerac, into the absinthe glass. That's beautiful. Of course, what I should have done at the start was to prepare the, uh, the garnish. So we're just going to fold over that that lemon zest. 
break those oils over the top. Just place that in there. Just to make sure that it contains the temperature. Just a couple of cubes of ice in there. And there we have our chocolate salad rack. Just going to taste it once more. Yeah, that's great. Interesting. I'm going to uh, take this outside. I'll be right back. So there we have it. I feel like I need to make myself an interim drink. I'm working hard this evening. So what we're going to do is we are going to turn off. That was the chocolate Sazerac. I'll give you a couple of uh, details about Sazerac in a minute. Uh, it's obviously this is a variation on Sazerac. But uh, I'll just turn that off for a second. Put the cocktail list back up. I'm going to make myself something nice and easy that we can all do at home. And that's just a smoked rum over ice. Thanks for the hydrate, Dom. I'm going to use a naughty hydrate. Enjoy some smoked rum while I tell you about the Sazerac. Interest what interesting fact can I tell you about the Sazerac? Well, uh, it was originally made with cognac. Well, that's not strictly speaking true. It was originally made um, with whatever they had available, but um, it became popular with cognac. Um, but only up until 1870, uh, after which a uh, cognac became scarce because there was an aphid plague which ate the roots of all the, uh, the cognac grapes um, and so they had to start making it with bourbon um, but, but purists will always uh, lean back into the cognac angle um, so a Sazerac, uh, it's an interesting drink, it's, it's, it's changed quite a lot, it's evolved over time, um, yeah, very, very interesting. So next we have, coming up, is an old fashioned. I do hope Rhino Cuddy comes online very shortly. I can see him tuned into the channel, but is he actually online, or is it just his stream? championing mine. Who can say? Ryan, if you're there, pipe up in chat. I'm going to drink this rum and listen to this jazz. I'm already through halfway through the planned cocktails and we are uh, about a third of the way into the stream so I may be making some stuff up later uh, if anyone wants to suggest a cocktail that I should make um, I have most boozers available uh, well most major spirits available but um, yeah the secondary spirits can vary so we'll see what we can do Hope you all are having a wonderful uh, Friday. Uh, where I am in the UK, obviously, it's a bank holiday. So, um, hope you haven't been working on your bank holiday. And hope you've just been having a good time. Maybe you've uh, gone for a walk or uh, just met with some friends. But uh, whatever you do, just uh, make sure you're enjoying yourself. The Chocolate Sazerac is a 7.5 out of 10. 
for those of you that are interested, uh, Megan M147 uh, is um, on the premises and is uh, tasting these. Um, but obviously, if uh, other people want to join in and get involved, um, then they uh, they can and they can do their own ratings. Uh, just because uh, Megan M uh, says it doesn't mean that it's law by any stretch of the imagination. It's just her opinion and doesn't represent the uh, the views of this channel. I'm going to quickly check my messages, see what's going on, what's going on in the world. Lovely. Just a bunch of random messages, that's all it is. White, white wine and mango zero, seven out of ten, oof. Mango Zero. I mean, that sounds like something you'll get out of a supermarket, right? That's like the fizzy mango pop, I guess. And what kind of white wine? Is it a Moscato or a Sauvignon Blanc or? It's very confusing to me. Is it into that little streams that we have? It's a dry town, and to get my gift stuff at the gift shop. Oof. I'm so sorry, Dom. That must be painful. Absolutely dreadful. Very shortly, we will be moving on to the old fashioned. So, uh, I hope you all are ready for. One of the oldest cocktails in history. I talked about it last time we did a cocktail stream. Uh, but certainly, certainly one of the oldest in existence. And it starts with the sugar cube. Or at least the way I make it. Welsh wine. Is Welsh wine any good? I think I'll probably preempt that question, but seems seems rough. Mango Zero, yeah. Mango Zero makes it better. Mmm. Have you thought about white spirit? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I'm going to finish this smoked rum. And then we'll get on to a uh, old fashioned. Nearest boo shop is 13 miles away. It's terrifyingly awful. Just remember guys, we have three more days, three whole more days. Enjoy my fancy drinks, I certainly will sir. Yep, yep, one day you'll have to swing by and uh, enjoy, a, enjoy a chocolate Sazerac on the deck. All hands on deck. I'm just going to go and check on my guests, I'll be right back.
What's in your lovely cocktail, Granted Suicide? Juice, black carrot juice, and some slightly watered down vodka. Yeah, fruity. Nice. All right, we're getting into a uh, an old fashioned next. I'm not using that glass. I'm using this nice clean glass. So the thing with an old fashioned is that you can make it in the glass. So what I've done there is I've, I've put a, a sugar cube in the glass and uh, I'm going to take some, uh, I'm actually going to take some orange bitters because normally you would garnish, garnish an uh, old fashioned with a, uh, a slice of orange uh, rind. Uh, so, but um, as such, I don't have any of that, so I'm just gonna put some orange bitters on the old uh, sugar cube, and I'm gonna get a little bit of water. I'm gonna take the uh, the muddling end of the uh, barman sp spoon and we're just going to start breaking that up and we're just, we're just going to muddle that in do a little bit of grinding a little bit of bumping I'm just going to make sure that essentially what we've got there is a sugar syrup with some orange bitters in it. If you can still hear the crunch of the sugar still got a little ways to go. Just muddle that in. A lot of places cheat and this is the best way. This is the way. Just break that down as much as we can. any further. Before we put any bourbon anywhere near that. <gasps> Thanks Tom. I'm going to get my drinking receptacle. You may recall, because it's an Easter stream, we have an Easter bunny. And we're just going to Open this up. Just, just put that there. Now then. This knife. Against the knife of the bunny. Put that flat. You know what? It's not. It's not a sharp enough knife. Okay. 
Alright, so now we've got an appropriately sized knife. Hang on, hang on. I, I'm still not sure I'm going to do it cleanly, that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, I... Plastic down underneath it, you reckon, Dom? Oof. Right. This is an appropriately sized knife. Okay, so we're just going to cut off the head. Rock Rock and stone. Stone. Yeah! Unfortunately, what happened there is I cut off the side as well. So that's not really good as a drinking receptacle anymore. I've got one more chance. Otherwise, I'll have to put it in a glass. But sometimes, granted suicide, you need to uh, do some butchery. There you go. Job's done. I've got my drinking receptacles now. Easy. Easily done. Alright, so because it's Easter, I'm going to be serving my uh, old fashioned. I have an Easter egg! That's right, it's fucking Easter! Let's have some chocolate in there! Alright, yeah! I'm going to take my. Um, Sugar syrup. Just drop that into the bottom of a tin. And then take a double of bourbon. In there. Bosh, like that. Right. And we're just gonna move move that ice around. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Just giving it a little stir. The key really, I mean you're you're trying to cool down the liquid most efficiently as you can without breaking up the ice. And the turn. Got myself a little plate here. Just gonna put that in full view, and then we're just gonna strain it straight into the chocolate egg. There uh, we have an old fashioned Easter egg. That's right, that's right, that's right. Shit. Well, that just got spilled. Old-fashioned Easter egg. 
I'll have a little bit of chocolate after that. Mmm. All right. Some stuff to learn about a uh, an old fashioned then. What can I tell you? I mean, it's it's the world's uh, first cocktail. It's included in the world's first cocktail book called The Bartender's Guide, written in uh, 1862 by a man called Jerry Thomas. Uh, I mean, originally uh, an old fashioned would be made uh, with rye. But uh, these days, uh, it's much more common to make it with bourbon. Not your thing. Okay. That's fine. We'll get to something that's more like your thing in a minute. Anyone else in chat to shout out? Surprisingly, very few people that are logged in. But um, we're having a good time, so that's all right. more to go and then freestyle for a bit yeah there's a rate in the old-fashioned 9 out of 10 there you go so if you like a whiskey cocktail you got a uh, you got an old-fashioned didn't you absolutely delicious Yeah, there we go. So, uh, next up is the chocolate martini. So we did a martini before. Martinis traditionally were, were made with gin um, back in the day, as I said before. And um, more modern cocktails are, are calling for vodka as their base. So let's put the, uh, the chocolate martini recipe up. Alright. So, being a more modern version of the martini, she uses vodka. So let's um, let's wash our tins. Got to remember to wash your tins. I'll be right back. Join this chocolate bunny to be honest. Alright, what have we got? What have we got? What have we got? We've got some vodka coming up. This is a stirred cocktail. Plenty of ice in there. So for this particular uh, cocktail, I'll be using a uh, British vodka called Black Cow to wash wash my jigger. Uh, 
and uh, the ratio. So this is about a shot and a half of vodka. And then uh, we got a uh, we've got some creme de cacao white. You could use creme de cacao brown, but it would spoil the effect. So let's use the white. White is slightly sweeter. And we're going to use a single shot of that. Pour that into the glass. that in there. And uh, dry vermouth. Now dry vermouth lives in the fridge. For this particular one I'll be using some uh, some Dolin. But you can use any white vermouth as long as it's dry. Just pop that in, just a shot. And then we'll give that a little stir. Now you can just pour this into a martini glass. However, I've prepared a chocolate rimmed uh, espresso glass, a uh, martini glass rather, which I'm going to strain this into. chocolate martini. Not much to look at perhaps, but is it delicious? Yes it is. I'm enjoying it. So, having destroyed an Easter egg and an Easter bunny, Next got sounds of white Russian. Very exciting trick. Just to uh, comment on briefly on the uh, chocolate martini. Uh, they uh, they date from around 1890. Um, like I said before, originally made with gin. Um, but these days uh, you'll often see a martini uh, flavoured drink or brand of drink that has uh, got a strong vodka influence. Now, 
The White Russian is a drink that is very popular. Um, it's uh, something that is guaranteed to bring a smile to pretty much anyone's face, unless they're lactose intolerant, uh, in which case you should be drinking a Black Russian. And I'll come to the difference shortly. I'm going to um, wash my tins. Because I know this drink will be fairly popular, I'm going to make two at a time. Let's get the recipe up. There it is. There we go. Very, very simple. Very simple drink. We've got uh, vodka, coffee liqueur, and cream. That's all it is. Very simple. So we need some vodka. We've got uh, the uh, the British vodka. That's uh, what I've got here. Right now. I'm perfect indeed, sir. Thank you for the sound alert. I probably shouldn't be free pouring, should I? I mean, that's not very professional. What's professional is being able to put it back in the bottle. Now then. Lots of different proportions on a Russian. I'm going to do two at once. I'll just pop those down there. So that's vodka, and then we need uh, some coffee liqueur. So, depending on what coffee liqueur you use, I'm using Mr. Black. Um, some coffee liqueurs are sweeter than others. Now I know that Mr. Black is less sweet, so I'm just going to put a little dash of sugar syrup, just to take the edge off the harshness of the Mr. Black. Hello, uh, hello, Vit. Thanks for uh, chucking in a voice alert. Nine out of ten on the chocolate martini. That's that's good to know. That's a two to one ratio. Coffee liqueur to vodka. interesting night, can't you, when you're using the wrong top to screw onto the wrong bottle. Ay ay ay. Right. Ice. Mr. Black, uh, Mr. Black very, is a very great uh, coffee liqueur. Does go very well with some Baileys. I do agree. Mr. Pony. Not the only coffee liqueur in the world, but it is, it is a good one. I believe it originates in uh, Australia. So 
we're just going to pop some ice in some glasses. So what we've made here is a black Russian. That Russian does not include coke. For the un uninitiated, that is a Colorado Bulldog. The trick with the white ration oh, he says turning off his tap is to uh, ensure that um, it's delicious now you can include the cream up front I personally like to layer it on top as much as I can It's a little bit messy. In this particular instance, it's all sunk to the bottom, but that's fine. That's called me pouring too fast. But uh, they have your white Russian. I'm just going to uh, distribute these outside. I'm sure the people outside are in the process of sinking. Right. Perfect. The thing about White Russians is there's lots of different variations on them. The Black Russian came about in uh, around 1949. Um, but it's actually unknown as to when the cream was added. Um, there's lots of different variations. You can use chocolate milk instead of cream, and that's known as a dirty ration. If you use uh, creme de cacao instead of coffee liqueur, it's known as a white Belgian. And if you use Baileys instead of cream, it's known as a blind Russian. Presumably because you get blind drunk. So there's my little factoids about the uh, the Russian family of uh, drinks. About this time in the evening where I've come to the end of the list of the advertised cocktails. And I've got 45 minutes to kill, so what do you want to see? What kind of cocktails do you want me to make? Oh, to see the number of people typing.
8 out of 10 for the White Russian. Docked 1 point for presentation. That's fair. Well, I only tell my tell. You've, you've come to the end of the advertised cocktails. Um, is there anything that you'd like to uh, like to see in terms of cocktails? I can go around on any of the ones that are above, or uh, I have enough booze in my house that I should be able to make most things. Certainly of the major spirits. Something with an egg white. I mean, I could do an eggnog. Bourbon based deliciousness. Can't do something with egg white and bourbon. Espresso martini. Bourbon egg white, no. It's just not happening. I can do a uh, an eggnog. I'll do a quick eggnog. It's not really an uh, Easter drink, but it is festive, so you know. I'll get on that. Right. Shall so just have to consult the internet very briefly. Make sure that I'm remembering it right. Bosh, 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 bosh. Yeah, that's easy. I can do that. Okay. So for an eggnog, I'll take a uh, single brandy. I mean, it's festive at least. I mean, it's Easter, so it's the wrong festival, but that's where we're going. This Dom is very keen to see something with egg. Take all the ingredients. So that's a single of brandy, a single of rum, it's a single of milk, and an egg. Just to give it a little bit of lift, I'm going to put a little dash of sugar syrup in there.
And we have an eggnog. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it has come to my attention that my guests outside are concerned that I've not had enough to drink. And no, I'm not, Dom, going to do a flaming Lamborghini, a devil's hammer, a popping candy around the rim like a margarita. I'm not going to do any of that. So there, have that. It's not going to happen. I'm going to do something delightful for myself. No, my favourite. All right. So I'm a big fan of bourbon, and I'm a big fan of uh, the drink, uh, Manhattan, because uh, you can have it in so, so many different ways. But if I'm looking to relax after half a beat or two, <coughs> then I'll tend to make a sweet Manhattan, which is two shots of bourbon, and a shot of uh, vermouth, uh, sweet vermouth. And all it needs is a little stir, just to bring the temperature down. Very easy to make. You make it in the glass. Nothing fancy. Certainly want to enjoy. Sipping in front of a stream, listening to some smooth jazz. That's good. I like that. Very, very simple. I could add bitters to it if I wanted to. Not gonna. I hope you all are having a good evening. I hope this is setting you up nicely for your evening. Whatever you plan on doing for the rest of the night. Cheers. Move that bourbon bottle out of the way. And it's time for a stretch. Thank you very much, Vic. I just need to stretch my back out. Adjust my posture a little bit. 
Boom indeed. Boom indeed. Mm. I think I'll do one more when I'm finished my drink. Uh, and then I will sign off the stream. So, uh, whatever the next thing that is suggested is. I've got plenty of juice in the house. I might make something of juice. Juice, 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 juice. Been on the beers today, hence the nap. Okay. I mean, you can start on the spirits. All you have to do is rewind to the start of the stream. And... Triple fruited sour. I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but I'm sure that there are people that would enjoy that kind of thing. Juice. Just gonna see if there's a interesting drink that we can make with tomato juice. That isn't a Bloody Mary. No, that shit. That's also shit. Wow, there's not a lot of cocktails that use tomato juice. I'll have to improvise. A full English. I'm not doing a full English, Dom. Can't get away with that on stream. What can I do with pineapple juice? Not pineapple juice, tomato juice. I mean, I could do a Bloody Mary, but I don't have any celery, so what's the point? Vodka seems like the obvious choice. I think anything I build would be too much like a Bloody Mary, though. Like if I was to build something with vodka and like lime juice, for example, or lemon juice, it's too close to a Bloody Mary. Rosemary, tomato juice, gin. Yeah, okay. I mean, essentially, it's just a long drink with gin, isn't it? <laughs> Any slight reservation of that. See if anyone else is live at the moment. And very soon we'll be moving on, switching off the stream and raiding someone else. When I was doing hopefully something interesting. And uh, if you if you've enjoyed the stream and you've been watching along, chuck us a follow. If you're not signed in and you're watching on Twitch, just a general tip, sign in, there you count as a viewer. Uh, yeah, but if you've enjoyed yourself, I mean I'm, I'm streaming every Monday and Wednesday, regular times, and then I'll do about once a month, I'll do like a special stream, a little bit like this. Um, last couple of times it's been cocktail making, and I'll be doing something different probably next time but uh, what I'll be doing is kind of up to uh, up for debate 
got a couple of ideas, thanks to my um, creative content director, related to eggs. But, um, you know, maybe it's just um, the sound of a calendar girls themed stream. How would that even work, Fit? You're very welcome, Don. You too, man. You have a good evening. Yeah, I don't know, maybe a... Like a wood cutting stream, or uh, maybe a cooking stream, or uh, cooking some ribs or something. Could do that. That would be a thing. I mean, we would have a webcam pointed at an oven most of the time. Probably isn't that interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Ribs and wings. I could do ribs and wings. I did wings this evening, they were quite good. I think I've got some left over in the fridge. I might have those in a bit. Yeah, lovely marinade. Did them on a barbecue. Finished off in the oven, just to be safe. Yeah, some good old barbecue food. Who doesn't love ribs and wings, hey? Devouring the flesh from the bones. D and D time. Fair enough. Only time will tell. Underscore UK. Is that a stream, or uh, is that uh, just on Discord? No stream. Okay. Well, have a good evening. Success delving in those dungeons. And um, hope Strahd doesn't eat you. Barbecue stream. Yeah, it could do. Could do. It's particularly going into summer. I'm looking for summertime activities. I can't do a fire stream. I mean, we didn't hit the community goal this time around. But um, I'll be refunding those uh, channel points and we'll invest them again into something new. I think what I'm going to do there is I'm going to call it and um, we're going to go and uh, raid a fella. But uh, thanks very much for tuning in. And um, this guy, I don't know, he's probably shooting some zombies or something. So, uh, Ta-ta for now. Thanks for joining the stream and I'll uh, hopefully see you Monday. Ciao for now.
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's getting a bit chilly.